Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today I'm privileged to be with the CEO and founder of Beautiful Minds, Marina Pasolaris. Good morning, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to <laughs> meet with us today. It's a pleasure. And what a beautiful spot. I know the camera can't see it, but we're right in front of the water at Double Bay. Like, <laughs> couldn't have asked for also a better day. Thank God for spring kicking in. Yeah. But welcome to Rave It Up. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. And since this is your first time on the show, mm -hmm. we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Go for and it. And start Absolutely. from the beginning to get sure. a good idea of how you made it to where you to, uh, to made it to where you are today, and you know how you became you. So you did grow up in South Africa yes. and originally wanted to be an actress. I, I guess kind of like us yeah. all little girls. Yeah. But did you actually have any other, you know, dreams and careers that you wanted to pursue as well? Or no, I think actress was the big one. <laughs> yeah, I think the acting was a big focus for for me for many years. So I landed up um, getting a scholarship to go to a college in Cape Town in South Africa, and it was such a passion for me that I really thought that that was going to be where I was going to go. Mm. Um, and then my my father actually turned around to me at some stage and said, you know, if you can't get a full time gig with acting and you can't pay the rent properly and feed yourself you're going to need to look to just get a trade or something to sort of back up mm. your skills so I went and studied makeup artistry and I studied fashion design and they were all very creative and and you know it's it's funny because to some extent I still use all of those components well you look amazing today so <laughs> So, so at least, it wasn't even if you put it in your, on yourself, all the beautiful makeup and fashion tips, make yeah. yourself look good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it wasn't, it wasn't lost. Yeah, and I was reading your bio as well of your beginning stages. You did do a little bit of work at a yogurt factory. Very uh, different, but I guess you got to you got to do whatever you can do to pay the bills and working part time at a modelling agency as well. Mm. And they were like really big days, like really cruel hours, like 3 a.m. starting at the yoga factory. <laughs> I, th I think, you know, for me, I knew that I wanted to start Beautiful Minds. And the time that I was actually working in the yoga factory, I had quit working in the modeling agency. So I had this vision that I wanted to create this program for. And at the time, it was just for young girls. Um, but I had this vision and I had no money. And, you know, I just bought my first property and I had a mortgage to pay. and. They were pretty tricky times, so I would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I would go to the yogurt factory and I would be in this really cold, chilling, uh, chiller room um, from 4 a.m., wow. literally manually piping yogurt. And at 8 a.m. You know, in the morning, the shift would finish and I would go back home and, and you know, the office would open from 9 a.m. and I'd work from 9 a.m. until 5. And wow. when I talk about the office, it was my spare bedroom uh, at home. So. It was hard to get the business up and going um, because it wasn't at a stage that it was, you know, I, I, I wasn't making enough money to just do that 100%. So I needed to, to substitute it with something else. We all do at the beginning stages, mm. don't we? Until mm. it all the ball rolls. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and at the modeling agency, when reading your bio, mm. you know, you, you really did work with models up close and you kind of got to see, I guess, the... I'm not going to say the bad side of things, but very much the mental side of things for models. Mm -hmm. And that is really how you came up with the idea of, you know, we need a course for these girls. Yeah, yeah. But the owner, and who was actually a friend of yours, surprisingly, mm -hmm. didn't think it was a good idea. That's yeah. disheartening. But I'm really glad that it didn't stop you and that you still wanted to go do it. And Otherwise, that's, that's beautiful thing. minds wouldn't be here today. Exactly. exactly. It's really sad to think about. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, sometimes in life, you just need someone or a situation to just push you, mm. to propel you in a direction that you are po possibly at the time not brave enough to take. So whether it's breakups or whether it's you know jobs that don't go to plan or what it, whatever it is for you personally, um, look at it as an opportunity for a redirection. Mm. You know, don't look at it as failure. Um, and I think we do that way too often in life, you know, trust a little bit more in the process of life and, and it can land up in some really exciting places. Oh yeah, I'm a big believer everything happens for a reason. Mm. So the universe yeah. has a different plan for you and if yeah. you're not going on the right path, it's going to change you. So mm. Mm. modeling agency was not going to be your path, obviously. No. No. And working with that woman. Mm. <laughs> exactly. now, you, now you've made carved your own path, which mm. is fantastic. And you didn't know what you were, 
how to do it. We never really do when we first start. Not at all. No, I'd never done a business degree. I'd never um, written a business plan. I had no, you know, for me, I was just wanting to do something that my soul would dance when I woke up in the morning. Oh, I love that. Soul dance. That I love it. that. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. And anything, you know, um, in, in more detail, I had no idea where it was going to go or where it was going to lead. I just... Um, I went with my gut and I went with what, what felt right for, for yeah for me. Mm. And your first workshop only had like four kids four in it. People. Was that like <laughs> disheartening or were you like uh, was it fuel to like work harder? No, I didn't know any I I didn't know any different because it was the first one that, that I had, had ever done. And mm. um, you know, there were four people that really needed it and four people that are actually still in my life today. Oh, that's um, so lovely. And you know, I, I look back and I laugh at where the business started and where it is now. You know, mm. back then it was it was just me. I was going around to schools and, and running these workshops on my own. Now for you know, we do 270 workshops a year. We have 85 wow. um, staff on on on, on board, um, 15 full timers in the office, and um, yeah, we're in over 935 schools. So it, it's and it's growing every single every single month. We're we crazy we numbers. Keep up. So yeah, it's it's a completely different business, and and so I really value the early days because of that mm. Mm. and I'm guessing you did find it difficult to get it into schools so in the beginning obviously that's a big big challenge was there any other like really big challenges that you had to overcome you know did you have to I guess really have to prove yourself to people I know I did in the beginning <laughs> I think you know I started the business so young I was 25 or 26 when I started the business and I was dealing with the mental health of, of other people's children and not being a mum myself and not being you know old uh, <laughs> old enough for parents to trust me I think there was the an element of that at the start yeah, that, I, like, I, that was quite you, a what can you do for our kids hurdle. but I actually you know I, that's why I started to uh, evolve the business where we included psychologists and parent you know parenting experts experts and people that were really credible. Um, but the schools was a big challenge because you can appreciate that 16 years ago when I started this company, um, there was no other mental health organizations in Australia. We were the first. Yeah. You know, now there's a lot that have come along a long way and people that are talking about it quite openly. But back then people didn't want to have a conversation about it. And, um, as, and as, as I say, we were the first. Mm. Best of its kind. Good on you. I know. I know. It's, it's something fun. to celebrate. <laughs> Even after yeah, sixteen years later, it's still such a big deal, and all the lives you've changed mm. is incredible. You should be very, very proud. Thank you. And talking about schools as well, you know, I, you know, you, I'm sure you have your own opinion as well, but I honestly don't think enough is being done for the kids, mm -hmm. especially in terms of bullying. It yeah. seems like that you know, bullying is just being pushed under the rug, and kids are just being told to you know, mm. toughen up or whatever. Mm. What do you think we should do to kind of help that? Obviously, go to your workshops, but <laughs> what else do you think could be done? You know, it's, it's interesting that we're having this conversation because I actually have a really exciting meeting next week in Canberra House. Um, so I'll be in Parliament and I'll be talking to our Prime Minister and the Minister of Education. And the sole purpose of the meeting is for me to sit down with you know with them and just say to them that what, what what's happening at the moment in the mental health space in schools is not working mm. we can see that the stats are there we know that, that something needs to be done and we are actually at a national crisis uh, level so what I'm going to propose is that Beautiful Minds gifts our content into all the schools because the biggest problem that we have is that Yes, we're in 935 schools, and that's wonderful. But what about the 900, uh, the sorry, 9,332 schools wow. that we can't get into, and that no one is going into because they are in a location that people can't access, or they don't have the funding, so they're low socioeconomic, or they schools that don't have the resources and time to deliver it. So. The way forward, I believe, is that this should become part of the curriculum mm -hmm. and that there are too, there's too much noise when it comes to schools. There's so many different organisations going into schools and talking about topics that, how do we know if they're credible? What yeah. are the results that they're actually delivering? How do we know if students are seeing an improvement once they've been into their school? Um, and I think that we need to strip it all back and actually have one organisation delivering the content into all of the schools around the country. And it's something that becomes a government, government initiative with the, with the group. And that's what I'm going to propose next week in Parliament. I love that. Yeah. That's such a big deal, going into Parliament. Are you nervous? <laughs> I am nervous, but I also think, you know, at the end of the day, 
they are people. Yeah. Um, they've got children. They understand the, the, the issues that we are coming up against. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, if, if nothing gets done, I, I'm going to still keep doing what I'm doing. I don't lose anything by going in there. We still, we still have this incredible organisation and we'll keep moving forward and we'll keep growing. But I would really love them to sit up and listen. But you could definitely grow it even bigger. Mm -hmm. Going to every single school mm -hmm. around the country. Mm -hmm. That would oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I'm getting excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Let us know how it goes. I will, I will definitely. I'm sure it'd probably be if it if it ends up going ahead, goes in the news anyway, yeah. right? Yeah, it would do. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So for everyone watching and listening, in her workshops, Marina educates teens about, you know, who they are, how their minds work, you know, what healthy relationships look like which is very important uh, how to make good choices when it comes to peer pressure drugs yep. alcohol smoking how to stop negative self-talk like what you actually see in the mirror and so much more mm. so through all of this marina you must have you know heard some very tough stories from some children does it ever get to you because I know I've even heard some stories from some young kids and I'm like this isn't what you should be going through at whatever age 11 or yeah, yeah well Look, we've got an amazing team I don't I personally don't go to many of the workshops anymore so I've got a team that delivers them around the country which and they're incredible um, and we have some really challenging stories that come out of the work that we do um, personally I get a lot of calls in the office uh, on a weekly basis from parents or carers that are in tears and that's quite con confronting so no it doesn't get any easier um, because they, you know you're dealing with real human lives mm. um, and I would say that in the office we're all in tears a couple of times a week just with what we hear whether it's really happy news that we've had a child that's been in care and foster care and they've had an amazing experience with our program or whether it's a child that really needs our help and we are, are going through the process of supporting them oh it's so mm. beautiful mm. I really love what you do just, thank you this we is love why what I we wanted as well. this is why I wanted you on the show I was like the amount of lives you've changed just now let alone in the future it's just incredible and as both of us, you know, being women here today, I think we can both really agree. And I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to be sexist because, you know, I'm sure guys go through the exact same thing, but particularly us women, you know, going through self esteem issues, especially when it comes to body image and confidence. Have you ever had any issues with that yourself? So many. <laughs> How much time have you got? Um, yeah, let's talk about your whole <laughs> life. Let's. <laughs> No, look, I definitely, um, I had really bad acne as a teenager. Really? So really, really I wouldn't horrific. have guessed that. Look at her great skin now. <laughs> really, really shocking acne. And um, and I was put on, you know, a bunch, low, a, a bunch of different acne um, medication that for me made me feel quite depressed at times. And I, I really struggled with anxiety. I go through pockets of it now, but you know, it's probably once or twice a year and then I know that my life is a little bit out of balance and I just need to kind of, you know, meditate and take some time out. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. I think every single person on this planet struggles with who they are, what they stand for, um, you know, how they, how they see themselves is a big part as well. Um, so it doesn't, no one goes through life without feeling those, you know, real human emotions. Hmm. It's just how Unless do we, they're robots. <laughs> it's just how do we deal with it and how do we make ourselves stronger? Because I think that we, as humans, forget that we've got the power to strengthen our own minds hmm. and we just sit within ourselves and we just take it for granted that we have a low, so, you know, low self-esteem, um, no confidence. We have anxiety, we have depression, but we actually have to take far more control for our minds and get ourselves right and be yeah. a bit more of a driver um, for, for you know, how we think and, and how we feel. And I guess it's okay to have, you know, off day now and then. People get Absolutely. so worked up now and it's like, oh my God, I had a bad day. Like, how dare I? Just make every day like the reset point, you know? Now it's a yeah. new day. Yeah. Let's try to make this a good day and feel and, good about myself. And, and we're human beings, you know? It wouldn't be normal for us not to have, um, you know, good and bad days. And we've also got to appreciate and sit with the bad days as much as we do appreciate and sit with the good days. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I've never actually thought about that before, but it's very true. And you, so you did say, you, through what you are saying, you did go through a little bit of depression depressive states I guess but do you think you actually went through any depression absolutely yeah like absolutely. majorly or yeah I did for a period um, and it was interesting because I was probably 
I'd say about 15, 16, 17 years of age, and um, and I did go through some some really you know next level um, next levels of depression, quite suicidal at times, but wow. it wasn't discussed. Mm. So it was something that you know you 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 feel it internally, you know something's not right, but you are not given the supportive tools, um, at, or the, you know you, you don't even know how to express it really at the end of the day. So I look back now, and I can appreciate where I was, and I look back and read my journals and my thoughts, and I understand where I was back then, um, and I did go and see. You know, loads and loads of different psychologists and, and counsellors and, and experts to get me into a place where I was a lot stronger. Okay, so good, I definitely good, good. have been through the ringer. So when I, you know, when we are uh, dealing with young people that are that are struggling, um, I, I didn't have it easy by by no means. Mm. So with the workshops you do and the advice you give to teens or your. I guess the people that work for you do do you think a lot of it has come from your own personal experiences or also learning from other people I think it's changed quite a lot now where you know it definitely helps to have presenters that have got a little bit of a background and can be empathetic with what young people are going through but our workshops are very driven by facts and, and by tools and strategies because there's Good. too many people out there that are giving mental health advice or life skill advice and they actually not equipped to do so and they mm -hmm. make their conversations very fluffy and it's very much a, um, a matter of just be happy and just love yourself and that's really impossible to tell someone who currently is in a state where they're not happy and they really don't like who they who they see in the mirror um, so at the end of the day you know you have to give young people the tools to push through and move out of a bad situation so that life can get better for them um, so we do workshops that are very dynamic very interactive um, the, the girls have the most and boys because we do boys now as well but they have the most incredible day and we now take on youth leaders that come back and volunteer so they've done our workshops they've loved it they come back and they volunteer and most of these youth, lead, youth leaders stay with us for about four or five years out Aww. of choice and they give up Saturdays, Sundays, school holidays just so that they can be connected to the Beautiful Minds family because we give them a feeling that they don't get anywhere else yeah. and that's special. Oh, no, no, I know I'm not a teen anymore, but I really want to go along and have a look at this. You can come and I can, I can help you. you I'll, I'll be one yeah. of the volunteers. <laughs> so it would be lovely to see what you guys mm, do because mm. obviously I've seen heaps of promo videos and things like that and obviously listening to what you're saying today, but obviously a whole different level. The videos don't do it justice yeah. because, you, you know, from a privacy point of view, you can't capture the real stories no. yeah. and the real emotions. And, you know, these young people come to us uh, to a place where they feel that they belong and they're so isolated in their particular friendship groups. Perhaps their parents have been going through divorce. Um, you know, maybe they've just come to us because they just want to have fun and there's nothing wrong with them, but they just want to have an amazing day. Mm. So everyone comes with their own personal reason and they come together and they just connect and they laugh and they learn about themselves and they walk out of the, those doors at the end of the day feeling so, more, so much more powerful um, with who they are as an individual. And that is something you can't take away from anybody. Yeah. And as you said, videos aren't going to do it justice. Can't do it justice, yeah. no, no. I had a little look at your website as well and did look at those uh, it was 85 expert educators that you have. And I was very happy to learn that Naomi Sequeira is one of them. She's been on the show, uh, well, once, but when we've actually become really good friends now. And I saw her name, I was like, oh, okay. She's Didn't know amazing. she did this. She's amazing. So she actually um, works with our preteen, so our little girls aged 8 to oh, 11. How lovely. And she does a whole session on gratitude. And given her uh, substantial background, with Disney yes. you can imagine that the little girls just love, love the her. session with her so, mm. yeah we've got some amazing we've got some high profile presenters as well and every week we probably get about I'd say 50 to 70 emails with people that are wanting to come on board and be a presenter with beautiful minds uh, which is really exciting we are very careful with who we take on board so they either have to be a very famous well-known presenter and they are automatically going to be dynamic and engaging or they have to be an ex-school teacher, psychologist, counsellor. Yeah. So we do take the work that we do uh, extremely seriously with who we've got on board from a quality control point of view. How did you get people on board in the beginning? Did you just approach people online or were they mutual contacts? Or I started off with, with mutual contacts and then obviously as the business grew, um, you know, I started working with some really great parenting experts. And I think as people started to see the incredible results that this program actually had, the after after effect, yeah. um, people were really keen to put their hands up and be in, in, involved. But there is quite a, um, quite a strategy and a process 
process that goes involved with uh, with hiring presenters. And now you've gotten to the point that people actually email you wanting to become yeah, presenters. Yeah, so yeah. it's good that when you get to that point, mm. it's kind of like less work for you, but now you have mm. to choose people. <laughs> so yeah, kind of adding the work a little bit. <laughs> but it's good. It's it's great to be at that point where you know that you know. I mean, we get we get emails from people that have been on you know really well-known TV shows that um, have, have either joined our team or are joining our team and they've got a lot of value to add you know mm. which is wonderful and it's so exciting for our young people to come to a workshop and see well-known people in the community that can be their mentor and their support system for the day yeah oh, I love that you're such a busy woman though like as you said what 935 schools 270 workshops a year I can understand why you went to Bali to unwind, <laughs> was it last month? <laughs> I, I, um, I've got an amazing team that work in the office and one of the things that we are very clear about is that, you know, they give so much of themselves throughout the week to people mm. and, you know, mental health, you've got to be quite strong with, with who you are. And so I just said to them, you know what, I'm going to take you guys all to Bali and we'll... Um, what a great we'll, boss you we'll are. Have, a, have an amazing, <laughs> you know, two-week break and... You'll get paid your salary and you won't have to do any work and I just want you to go and have the best time ever. And that was purely so that as a team we could be, um, we could come together a bit more and, and, yeah. and kind of get a little bit stronger. Um, but also so that they could know that I really support their mental health and their well-being is really important to me as, as, as an owner. So do you do that every single year or? Yeah. Oh, love that. Every, all yeah. the business owners out there <laughs> need to take that on board. <laughs> it's, it's important to look after your team. You know, we, we work really hard and the, the schools is one component and yes, the workshops are another, but we are launching an online program that we've been working uh, with a team Just in going to bring that up later yeah, yeah. How, so is that do we know when that's happening yet is November, a, November. It's okay. taking two years to put this two years, yeah. two years of, of beta testing and working with the top experts in in the United States because it is going to be a global um, a global program um, and there's you know there's books and there's merchandise and there's a whole lot of other really exciting things coming out oh, you're so. making us Aussies proud so, go on global go. I love it <laughs> And what do you do like more on a daily basis to unwind? I did hear you meditate before. Yeah. Is that daily? Do you exercise? I do journal? exercise. <laughs> I do. I've got a beautiful um, personal trainer that I try and see three times a week if possible. Um, and he's just here in Double Bay. So, it's, so I can literally get into, work. The yeah, yep. get into the office um, quite quickly in the morning. And um, yeah, I mean, in summer, I love to walk. You, I, I live, you know, two seconds from the water. So it's beautiful in this part of the world. And um, to unwind. I mean, this never really switches off. No. You know, I, I do work. Six, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I work six days a week all the time um, I have a partner that is equally as busy he's uh, he's a, a screenwriter for Warner Brothers so he travels a lot and we both have pretty uh, crazy lives um, but I love spending time with him and I love spending time with my family um, they live in, in Queensland but I just think being around people that you really love mm. um, and that can relax you is a good thing and it's good having a partner that's equally as busy as well yeah. and, and gets your busy schedule well he's also very inspirational so I think being with someone who understands your your path and and what you're trying to achieve and and i understand what he's trying to achieve as well we work really well um as a team to make sure that we look after each other and um and that we go after some really you know we go and kick some really serious goals yeah the week. yeah love it yeah. <laughs> and it seems like you're probably even busier now because you have just uh you now own an essential oil company I saw on Instagram. <laughs> Please tell us more about that and oh. how did that come about? So a couple of months ago I came across some products, some essential oil products for young people and they had been designed specifically for teen girls in mind and I initially just bought a couple of, um, couple of them and tested them with the girls in workshops and everyone raved about this brand but the guy that owned the business and started it didn't have the time to put in the love and the dedication to take this as a, a you know and really get it up as a, as a proper company so yeah. I took him out for a drink one day and I just said look your products are amazing you've developed them beautifully but you know they're not on the market no one knows about them um, and I can do much better justice with with the with the you know the company then then you've got the time to do so I bought his um, his factory uh, and all the staff um, that came with that <laughs> and uh, I now own uh, an essential oil company and we look we I'm going quite slow with it mm. um, because we've obviously got this big meeting in Canberra next week which has been a big focus for many many weeks and um, 
and we're launching the online uh, program as well. But the oil company will be a big focus uh, next year. I do want to not only um, launch it to every single person that comes to Beautiful Minds so that they'll have their own to take home, yeah. but I do want to get it into um, some price lines and some canvas <gasps> as well. So yes. that's the plan. Yeah. Please keep me updated. I, I love will. essential oils, so I want to buy some. <laughs> there you go. And before we, you know, get some advice from you for people that probably want to do similar to what you're doing, might as well get other people joining in and changing the world. I'd really love to chat about this exciting time of your life. Last year, you were nominated for Australian of the Year. I was. How did that feel? Like, you know, it's it, amazing. It Congratulations, was, it by was, the way. No, thank you. It was incredible. It was incredible. And um, I'm super, super lazy with business awards. I never <laughs> enter them. Um, I think we've been nominated for Telstra Business of the Year for the last nine years, and I've never put the entry in. Oh. Um, just, and never gone to the award show, obviously. No, <laughs> I just, I think... For me, I know that it's great for the public to know that you have been recognised um, and we won... Well, they uh, now know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we won the Westpac Bank um, 200 Business Awards oh, cool. a, a year before and that basically was the top 200 emerging companies in Australia and that was really exciting and again, I didn't enter it. I was literally put forward and, and, and won. So it is great, um, but I think we're also just putting our heads down and doing as much work as possible so that we can make the change that we need to a bigger impact yeah. on the world yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. hopefully you might win australia of the year another time who that knows would be great <laughs> put the good word out guys <laughs> if anyone knows anyone yeah <laughs> exciting and do you have any advice for the people that want to maybe start their own business get into putting workshops into schools and things like that or even i guess coming to work for you who knows <laughs> i think at the end of the day you've just got to be quite clear on on what it is that you want to what mm. you want to do um, and don't look at what other people are doing so don't look at your competitors if you do have any in the market we without sounding arrogant don't have any because there's no one that does the broad scale of the schools and the boys and the retreats and the workshops yeah. and the online that we cover um, but if you do have competitors or people that are doing similar things, don't, don't even look at them, you know, let them do um, and achieve their greatness their way and you achieve your greatness your way. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I'm always going to come to you for advice. Your Anytime. advice is amazing. <laughs> and we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Marina. It's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you. You're very welcome. But as a closing statement mm. and was probably the most important question, mm. knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old self? Ooh, um, there was there, there would be a lot of things that I would tell her, but I think the most important thing is to know that there is enough time to do everything that you want to do. Yes, I completely you know, agree with that. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be at a, at a certain age, to um, particularly girls. You know, we think we need to be married at a certain age, and we've got a lot of pressure from society with what it should all look like. And I think you've just got to live life your way and live mm. life at the age that you, you know, be your age in, in, and embrace it in, in terms of that. Don't be afraid. Like, I feel like I'm just getting started. You know, I'm, yeah. we're just warming up. We, we haven't done anything yet. We're, we're, we're yeah. just kicking off. So, um, and that's really cool. You know, there's a lot of time to still make uh, impact. So if you are a 30 year old person or a 40 year old person or a 70 year old person, and you feel that you've got something that can contribute and add value to the world, then you need to get out there and do it without the, the fear that it's too late because it's never too late. Mm, I completely agree. Yeah. So only like last year I was stressed about life. I was like, oh, you know, even though I've achieved so much, I'm like, there's still still so much that I wanted to achieve by now. And then I'm like, no, calm down, Lauren. Like, you're still young. Like, get over it. <laughs> so I use the column effect. And I don't know mm. if you know the column effect, but it helps me. And I think if you put your life into columns of 10 in terms of your ages, yeah. you know, I'm only in my fourth column and I'm planning to live for another five columns. Hopefully five. Yeah, six, five or six yeah. columns. So... <laughs> You know, put it in that sort of perspective in terms of time. You know, you, you, you've got a lot of time and there's a lot that you can get done uh, in a week. You know, the, the procrastinating um, wastes a lot of energy for you and it, oh, and, yeah. it, and it kind of instills a lot of self-doubt as well. 
Well, if you keep with your personal trainer and keep meditating, you may have the seven, eight boxes. Who knows? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> keep it going, girl. Keep it going. And before we go, if the people watching and the listeners want to find out what you're up to in the future yeah. or contact you, where should they go? Um, so easiest place is obviously social media. So we've got a great Instagram page, which is just at Beautiful Minds. Awesome. And the website, which is beautifulminds.com.au and Facebook, Beautiful yeah. Minds Australia. So There's some great things um, coming come, up, obviously. Yeah, lots of exciting things. So definitely come over and say hi. Yes. And, Amazing. you know, you did release a book, Beautiful Minds, mm. well, a while ago mm. now, isn't it? Time is going fast. 2012. Do you, do you ever think you'll write another one? Maybe about your life and how you started, because I know I'd read that. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is something in the pipe works, but it's with uh, two other very well known celebrities in the US. Oh, awesome! And we're doing a collaboration, which but I'm I've parked that until next year because yeah, you're just already so, busy so enough. Fun, so, but that is something that we're looking at doing, which will be pretty amazing. Well, come back on the show and chat about it because I would love to hear about it. Amazing! And thank you so much for coming on the show today. Great to chat to you. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Mm-hmm. And just consider it your second home. Oh, come on anytime. I love it. I love what it is, is actually? Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. We'll just meet on this park bench and we'll just chat about life. I love it. Done. <laughs> done. 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 Everyone ever watching, uh, the website beautifulminds.com.au if you want to go check it out. Workshops, as we've talked about. Retreats that they do on the school holidays. Separate one for teenage girls. Separate one for teenage boys. So go check it out. If you have kids, highly recommend it. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>